Okay, so I want to start tonight with two questions that many of us ask as we lay in bed at night, unable to fall asleep. Who are we and who am I? Now, these are pretty lofty questions, huh? But people in organizations are constantly asking questions like these as they try to understand their identity. And the answers to these questions are more than just a name like Josh Bauer or St. Paul's Lutheran Church. And being a Christian is much more than just the label Christian. Asking the question, who are we, is about exploring our identity. Why do we exist? Why are we here? What do we do or not do? What are our priorities? It's also about what does it mean for me to be, Josh Bauer, a Christian and a member of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Well, in tonight's reading, Jesus teaches the disciples, teaches those who are interested to hear, and in fact teaches us what it means to be his followers. Even a quick glance at the reading indicates that being one of Jesus' followers means that you are blessed. This blessing is splashed lavishly upon us as Christians by Jesus. Now, some of you may be thinking to yourself, hey, wait a minute. I really don't feel blessed. Life's not totally great. I have problems. And some of you may be even thinking if, wondering if God still loves you. Because life is not easy. I know, trust me, I've been there too. It's tough. You may not feel blessed. You may feel broken, beaten, and run down. Well, in tonight's reading, Jesus is addressing this very issue. He's explaining to his followers that they are blessed. That's right, as a Christian, you are blessed. We have been accepted into the kingdom of heaven. Remember this, we are blessed. All Christians are blessed. Not only does he point this out, but to understand this, it's helpful to look from God's perspective. Did God achieve his ultimate goal of saving the world in the same way that a human being might try to save the world? How Christians are blessed is different from how others believe blessings can come to them. Many people believe that the way they are blessed is by doing the right thing or by being at the right place at the right time or even meeting certain expectations. If I asked you, who do you think is blessed? Who would come to mind? Maybe a sports person? Or someone wealthy? Maybe someone with a lavish home? Some even adopt the slogan that the harder I work, the luckier I get. But the blessings that we receive as Christians are something that are totally gifts to us. Their value is enormous. In fact, it's life-giving. And it is given to us not because of what we do. This is the good part. Not because of what we do, but because of who we are. Children of God. In the Beatitudes that you saw, Jesus is not saying that you need to be poor, meek, or mourning so as to inherit the kingdom of heaven, but rather he is indicating that even the poor in spirit will be blessed and enter the kingdom of heaven. Listen also to what God says in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Our holy God lives forever in the highest heavens, and this is what he says. Though I live high above in the holy place, I am here to help those who are humble and depend only on me. Now, remember, one of Jesus' main attackers were the religious leaders. They had a lot of pride in how they were spiritually, and they were proud of what they had done. But it didn't stop there. They would frequently criticize and chastise others who were not as religious as them. And unfortunately, their religious pride acted as a roadblock to God's grace. Ironically, those who felt spiritually dry were open to God's grace. They had room for it in their hearts. Listen to what happens in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Jesus told a story to some people who thought they were better than others and who looked down on everyone else. Two men went into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood over by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not greedy, dishonest, and unfaithful in marriage like other people. And I am really glad that I am not like that tax collector over there. 
I go without eating for two days a week, and I give you one-tenth of all I earn. The tax collector stood off at a distance and did not think he was good enough even to look up toward heaven. He was so sorry for what he had done that he pounded his chest and prayed, God, have pity on me. I am such a sinner. Then Jesus said, when the two men went home, it was the tax collector and not the Pharisee who was pleasing to God. If you put yourself above others, you will be put down. But if you humble yourself, you will be honored. Who are the tax collectors in our lives? The people that feel inadequate before God. How are we bringing them the good news that God loves them, accepts them, and cares about them? Jesus continues, Even the meek will be blessed, for they will inherit the earth. Even those who are mourning, even those who are under attack, who's, those who are hungry and thirsty, the merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, even those who are persecuted, God considers righteous. Now, most Christians have had some experiences like this in their life. They might not be physically attacked, like Christians in Indonesia, some Middle Eastern countries, and like we just saw take place a couple days ago at that university in Kenya. But nevertheless, most Christians receive some form of emotional or verbal attacks simply for being a Christian. Have you ever had your intellectual ability or sanity questioned because you're a Christian? There are many who have. Have you ever been told that you're no fun because you're a Christian? You ever experienced these situations? They're kind of difficult to deal with at times. We can be tricked into believing that God has deserted us or we aren't doing the right things when such attacks take place. When they happen, remember, Jesus is right there with you. Jesus is saying, I am right beside you, helping you when things like this happen. I haven't cut you off. You're still on the right track. A friend of mine says, the more that I am persecuted for my Christian faith, the more I am convinced that God exists. Why would the devil try to distract me from something that wasn't worthwhile? Now remember, also, even during times of persecution, even during the difficult times, you are still blessed. The persecution is not a sign that you're doing the wrong thing, but rather expect people to insult you, to attack you, and to persecute you because of your faith. Now, some of the best trainers of salespeople are up front with their trainees. They say, look, you are going to get a heap of no's and yes, some abuse. But if you're going to survive, you need to realize this. Just cop it on the chin and move on, because then you're one step closer to that sale. Likewise, Jesus is doing the exact same thing for us. He is saying, your life as a Christian will be full of ups and full of downs. Expect it. Don't take it personally. And remember, as a Christian, you are blessed with a reward in heaven and God walking right beside you. The Beatitudes is Jesus' statement that shows differences from other religions and worldly thinking. He is revealing to his disciples that it is God alone, God alone, who hands out his blessings. The blessing is not dependent on our actions. Rather, God blesses us continually and has blessed us with eternal life, being his chosen children. So, who are we? We are blessed by God before we can even think about doing something to earn his blessings. We are likely to be persecuted in some shape or form simply for being blessed, for being a Christian. And yes, at times we may feel inadequate, not strong, but yet Jesus is working in and through us, blessing us the entire way. And as Christians, that is who we are.